Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to Church Online. I like to just say it, because it's true. Another beautiful day here at Arlita First Assembly. We've enjoyed some great weather the past several days, but just want to say it's always good to connect together. I want to share a couple of announcements with you. One of them is we had a great, great time yesterday at Good News Club at Beachy Elementary School. It was our, our launch date. And the Good News Club team just did a beautiful job. And it was so good to see so many of the boys and girls from Beachy Elementary School coming to the After School Good News Club program. And so I just always want to just say how much I appreciate all of our Good News Club team. And if you see them, make sure that you let them know how much you appreciate them and all that they're doing, the investment that they're making in the boys and girls there. I also want to let you know about our Missions Emphasis Month, which is October. And this Sunday, will be our emphasis will be on world missions. And we'll be having an international dinner banquet at 5 o'clock in the sanctuary. Don't want to miss it. It's going to be really a great time together. And then on the 23rd, October 23rd, Sunday, at 10.30 a.m., we're going to have a great, great service, mission service, and the emphasis will be on home missions, and that will be really a great day because following the service at 4 o'clock, we'll be doing a kids club at the Projects in Pacoima. You don't want to miss that. That's going to be a great time. It's always a great time when we're able to share the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Well, this evening, I just want to begin our time, our short devotional this evening, with a question. And the question is this here, it's, how is your spiritual appetite? I'm not talking about your physical appetite, uh, if you're hungry for lunch, or you're hungry for dinner, or you're hungry for breakfast, but what's your spiritual appetite like? Uh, how is it? In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 2, I want to read that passage of scripture, it says, you must crave and that's a, uh, that's a loaded word, crave. I think we've all been there before with a craving for something. It says you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment. And that word craving, I always come back to it because I think about myself personally. Sometimes when I'm driving down the street and I pass up a C's candy store, I look over and boy, do I get a craving for a, uh, for a little box of, of C's candy to enjoy. But it's something I think, oh man, I just would like to have that. Boy, that would make me feel good. Boy, I really need that. Uh, but, that but that craving, it's something you just, you just want. And so the question is, you know, how's your spiritual appetite? Are you hungry? Are you hungry for God? Uh, listen, it's possible. It's possible to maintain a spiritual hunger, a craving for the Lord the rest of your life. And I wanted to share real quick like five ways to keep your spiritual appetite, to keep that craving alive in your soul for more of the Lord. And so number one is this here. Remind yourself, remind yourself how much God, the creator of the universe, loves you and believes in you and wants relationship with you. Uh, the more you understand about how much God loves you, the more you're going to love Him and that relationship will grow. The Bible says this in Ephesians chapter 3 verses 18 and 19. It says, um, May you have the power to understand how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is for you. May you experience the love of Christ, the Bible says, uh, though it is too great to really fully, fully understand. Then you'll be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. So, the first thing, first thing to, uh, to keep that appetite alive that you'll need to have for that spiritual appetite is just remind yourself about how much God loves you. Think about that. Ponder it. Meditate on that, on that fact 
that God loves you and he believes in you. The second thing is, um, stop filling up on junk food. Boy, I, I know as our kids were growing up, if it was close to lunch or close to dinner, uh, the last thing we'd want to do was give them a candy bar and a soda or an ice cream and a soda because it would just take away from their, their appetite. And we wanted to have good food in them, nourishing food that would help them to grow and be sharp and quick. And uh, listen, a way to keep your spiritual appetite alive and that craving there is stop filling up on junk food. Um, you're a spiritual being. God made you and me a spiritual being. And I've heard this said before. You probably have too. He created us with a, uh, with a hole in our hearts that can only be filled with and by His presence. Proverbs chapter 15 verse uh, 14 says, A wise person is hungry for knowledge, while a foolish person feeds on trash. The third thing, the third thing that will keep your appetite alive is make knowing God, make knowing God your number one goal in life. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and then all these things will be added unto you. Another translation reads it this way, Matthew 6, 33, it says, seek first God's kingdom and what God wants, then all your other needs will be met as well. See, happiness and contentment, it's a byproduct. It's a byproduct of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And then the fourth thing that will keep your appetite alive is this year, is get into God's Word, get into the Scriptures, read the Bible every single day. The Bible, the Bible, the Scriptures, it's food for your soul. Um, eating, I know for me it doesn't work, but eating a meal once a week is not going to cut it. Eating a meal once a day, for me, isn't going to cut it. And uh, I, you, you can't continue in life with that one meal a week or that just one meal each day. It, it will impact you uh, negatively. And in the same way, in the same way, uh, you need to feed on God's Word and make the Scriptures a part of your life every day. Get a crave for, the Bible says this here, I want to read it again uh, from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 2. It says, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow, so that you will grow into a full experience in relationship with Jesus Christ. Then the fifth thing, the last thing we want to look at this evening is your appetite that craving is going to in, be influenced by those who you hang out with, those who you're around. If you hang out with people who are only concerned and only want to talk about politics, and uh, listen, you'll, uh, you'll feed on that, and that's all you'll do is talk about politics. And, and uh, if it's sports, and you hang around with a group of people that they don't talk about anything but sports, then uh, you'll find yourself uh, influenced in that way as well. And so it's important for us, nothing wrong with talking about politics, nothing wrong with talking about the Los Angeles Dodgers, headed to the World Series, hopefully. Uh, but nothing wrong with those things there. But it's important to be around God's people as well. Followers of Jesus Christ who talk about the Lord. They share testimony about what He has done for them. They talk about their salvation. They talk about the goodness of God. Um, when you get around a group of people like that, it, uh, it has a way of influencing us. And so let's uh, work at, at not only being around those people, but being those kind of people that bring influence, godly influence, to, uh, to those who are around. Uh, so, I just want to end with asking a couple of questions like we do each Wednesday night. Is Number one is, what does it mean? Think about this for a minute. Ponder it as you uh, get ready to hit the hay tonight. Think about this here. What does it mean to have a passion and a hunger, to be hungry for God? What does that mean? And then the second thing is, how can you remind yourself throughout the day of God's 
love for you, his desire for relationship with you. And then the last thing is, what are the things that you talk about the most with your friends, with your spouse? You know, how is your conversation feeding your spiritual appetite? Are you hungry for God? Listen, you can be, and that appetite can be there the rest of your life. Just kick these five points that we've talked about tonight, kick them into action, and you'll find you'll have that desire and that hunger for the Lord each and every day of your life. Lord, we thank you so much this evening for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you for your love, your great love for us. And Lord, I just pray for each and every one of our dear friends this evening that, Lord, you would help us to practice these things, each of us, to practice these things, to have a greater appetite for you. And Lord, if we have a great appetite for you and your word becomes a part of our lives, we're going to experience joy and contentment, happiness, fulfillment in our walk, in this life's journey that you've allowed us to be on. Lord, would you bless our dear friends with a good night's rest, great day tomorrow. And then, Lord, of course, we ask that you be with us in a special way as we prepare for Sunday, a great day in your house. Thank you, Lord. We pray these things in the wonderful name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen and Amen.